Can you get away in 2020 with just an iPad? That's what we're gonna figure out today. We'll go over using an iPad for education, for work, for home, uh, for creativity, and finally for consumption. In short, yes, let me show you how. Let's get right into it. So the iPad Pro sort of has this identity crisis this past year in 2019. Is it a Mac becoming closer to an iPad or an iPad coming closer to a Mac? Uh, it's sort of this converging phenomenon that we're seeing. Most tablets have tried to mimic laptops to a T. A Surface can run Windows apps and Microsoft wants you to use these things on the go to get work done. The problem is it's not really better than using a laptop most of the time and it's stuck somewhere in between a good tablet and a good laptop but doesn't really do either that well. So where does the iPad Pro fit in all of this? Let's do a quick rundown of the specs. The iPad Pro has an 8-core A12X Bionic processor. It has a 7-core Apple Design Graphics, a 12.9-inch display with rounded corners, a 10 gigabit per second USB-C port. So all of this sounds great, but what's missing? The first thing that people have said a lot is it doesn't really have a display out. It needs to have a better display support. Many pro apps support external displays now, like LumaFusion for video editing. P.S. This entire video was edited using LumaFusion on the iPad Pro. Secondly, there's keyboard and mouse support, but there didn't used to be. Bridge just announced a new keyboard and trackpad that lets you use a mouse and gestures and uh, different shortcut keys, and I'm excited to try that out. It comes out in a couple of months, but until then, just as is, can you get away with an iPad as a laptop? I think that's sort of an interesting question, and I'll explain why in just a moment. People are upset that it doesn't have a headphone jack. Um, I would say most people nowadays are tending to get Bluetooth headphones, so if you don't have any, I would probably recommend getting AirPods, they're pretty much the best to use with your regular headphones. It's a USB-C to headphone adapter, and that costs just $9. Fourth, the Files app. It's gotten a lot better over the last couple of years, but with the release of iPadOS, it lets you manage the files on your iPad, as well as to use external drives. In my opinion, it's one of the best ways to manage files that are stored on things like Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, Box, or Dropbox. Uh, so can this be your only device, even for pros? Professional people have to do a lot of work and, and adhere to certain deadlines. Uh, in my opinion, I think we're closer than ever, and for most, if not everyone, they can get their work done on an iPad. It has everything you need. A 120Hz display, it's brighter and more color accurate than most laptops. It's significantly lighter and thinner than most laptops. You see where I'm going with this. From the person who's serious about getting work done to the novice user who uses an iPad to browse the web, check email, and play a few games. An iPad Pro can finally be a good replacement for a laptop. But is this even the right question to be asking? Think on a daily basis the number of times that you actually use a laptop. Is it for work? Is it for personal uses? But it's not always convenient to just lug around a laptop everywhere. It's certainly not convenient to move a desktop. So if you're on the go and you just wanna get work done quickly, this is the device that can do it. And more and more we're seeing all of those gaps be closed. Steve Jobs once said, the best camera that you have is the one that's always on you. The same can be said about laptops, that the best computer is the computer you take with you everywhere and do nearly everything with. And finally, familiarity. In my opinion, a lot of the reason people are hesitant to switch to an iPad Pro is because we're so used to these core experiences that it's hard to change things up, even if there's another or better way to do things. And so, Let's go over a little bit about how I found and overcame those barriers. So I'm a senior in college and I have a relatively large workload. In the past few years, I've moved away from physical textbooks and moved over to ebook textbooks. I, like many college students, bought an iPad or you know a tablet that I could bring with me and keep all my books on. And now you see that pretty much all the time. I've always just wanted one device that I could carry with me everywhere, that could do everything. I think the context of education really shows off some of the problem areas that I had to deal with if I just wanted to use an iPad. This is because schoolwork often involves many things at once. Creating content in the form of essays, presentations, and using web interfaces that needed more than just a mobile web browser. Do you remember back even just a couple years ago when all you could really get on a web browser 
was a very basic version of Google. You, you could barely watch a YouTube video. This was only about seven or eight years ago. And since then, it has completely transformed the way that we use technology and use computers. Most people have a phone in their pocket and they use their phone most of the day. But what about when you want to get more work done? That's where an iPad comes in. It can be that device. I'll often have two apps open side by side, like Word and Safari, um, or Netflix and Amazon, text messaging and Google Docs. If Apple only listens to criticism uh, about what a computer should be or what it should do, when you listen to criticism from a small subset of the community, you negate the possibility to make something that is actually revolutionary. Imagine what the iPad or imagine what the iPhone would be if they only listened to, you know, the loudest voice in the room. If Apple listens to these complaints, then tablets, iPhones even, they would look a lot different. For example, the iPad might have a bunch of ports on it, it might be a lot more clunky, it would basically just be running macOS, and it would basically have all the problems that Surface devices currently have. And that's that they don't really have a ton of apps that work well for touch because these things just were not designed to be used with fingertips. So that's where Apple has done, I think, a good job. These would be things the iPad Pro is competing against. So let's take a look at how the iPad Pro is compared to a laptop. First, I'm always taking notes in school. I prefer typing my notes. Um, and a lot of YouTubers are saying, you know, how they use the Apple Pencil to do work on their iPad. Uh, but I'm not a fan of writing on the screen. I had the 10.5 inch iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil, the first 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and it just was not a good experience to write using an Apple Pencil. I personally use Microsoft OneNote, uh, which works well. It organizes all my notes conveniently in a digital binder, and it does it by semester, by class, uh, and date. If you're someone who likes using the feel of paper, then just use paper. There's apps right on the iPad. One of them is the Notes app, where you can actually scan in your notes and uh, sort of keep them in the collection. Uh, Notability lets you scan in notes and add different things onto them. But yeah, Apple Pencil, not for writing in my opinion. I don't like it. But that's just my two cents. Secondly, research papers. There's always essays due and assignments that require a certain amount of research to be done beforehand. Uh, you can open up Safari and Split View. It's convenient to drag and drop images right from the web browser onto pages. And that works well with long research docs. Presenting information in business meetings. The split screen feature applies to pairing for business meetings. Creating PowerPoints, super easy. Uh, my personal choice is to use PowerPoint because it's standard if in most, if not all, schools and businesses. They all have Microsoft Office installed, so there's no compatibility issues that you have to deal with last minute. Accessing data away from home or the office, there's two pretty much main ways that I access my data, which is Safari Downloads Manager. That's if I'm downloading something from the cloud. It allows you to open up pretty much any document in any app you want. For example, you can open MB4 files in the Files app or watch them right in the web browser. You can save PDF documents and open them right in your Books app, and it's really convenient whenever you're on the go. Next thing is the Files app, which I use all the time. It's really easy to manage your files. You can plug in external hard drives or SD cards, SSD drives, pretty much anything you need, you can connect to your iPad and it will work. Playing games and consuming content on the go. Uh, mobile games have come a long way from the simple Candy Crush style of game. An iPad has a lot of power. It has the power to run a full console quality games. Stay with me. I know there might not be as big of a selection of AAA titles on the App Store, but there's a decent selection ranging from shooters to side scrollers. Two games that I think really show off the iPad's power are Asphalt 9 and Call of Duty Mobile. Um, I will say, you know, I spent a lot more time than I would have liked on these apps, but just to prove that the graphics are insane. Both allow you to use the made for iOS controller, um, or even more conveniently, if you have a PS4 or Xbox One, you can use either of those controllers to control a game. The combination of the high resolution screen with the high frame rate makes games look beautiful. I sort of hope that Nvidia releases GeForce Now on iOS. Um, it's a way to play games right from Nvidia servers that you own on Steam, on Uplay, etc. right on your computer. Accessing the internet in a public space. 
The iPad has always been my favorite way to browse web. I think that might even be what the I and iPad stands for. Um, it's the best way to watch YouTube videos, to read articles, and there's nothing like holding the web in your hands. Even though the iPad Pro only has four or six gigs of RAM, I do not know what Apple does in terms of optimizing all that to work without any stutters or jitters, but it works so well, even at 120 hertz. And it definitely beats out any similarly priced computer. Sending and receiving email in a public space. Email on iPad is nice. Um, you can work on multi-formatted, complex emails, or just send a quick one off right from your notifications on screen. My favorite feature is to actually take a screenshot right in the mail app and it will do either a screen grab or grab an entire PDF of the page, mark it up and send it away. For education, like I said before, all my books are available right on either the iBook store, but they're all on my iPad and there's nothing like being able to access all of that on the go. When you're working on an assignment, you have to look up a certain answer or question or reference something, you can type it right into the search key and uh, have your answer in seconds. Long gone are the days of searching endlessly for an answer to an assignment question. Businessmen and women use laptops all the time. They're constantly writing, presenting things, or creating content for work. They use email and complete a lot of work online. This is where personal and education sort of overlap with business. People's needs are all sort of similar. We need a lot of internet, we need access to powerful applications, powerful hardware, all these things that work well together. Um, the Mail app has Exchange built right in, or you can use Outlook. There's so many features I can't even begin to describe, but if you need it, it's there. How about for creativity? Photo and video professionals have unique needs. In addition to requiring computers with powerful processors that can meet the challenging demand of popular photo editing apps, working on images that they're creating. When someone's photographing a wedding or working on their next big film project, time is the biggest factor. How do you make something of quality but not have it take up your whole day. That's where Lightroom, GIMP, Photoshop, Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, all these apps come together on computers that help people uh, in their workflow. It saves them time, effort, and energy. And more and more you're seeing these apps or ones just like it and as powerful come to the iPad. You see full Photoshop on the iPad, a full Lightroom on the iPad. Um, I use LumaFusion to edit uh, and cut together videos. Uh, it's one of the most powerful editing applications that exists. Right now, you can do all the basics, many, many advanced features. And when you export it, it's just as fast as using a high-end MacBook Pro or laptop. I think we're just in the beginning of where a tablet is heading. Think back to when the first iPhone or Google phone came out. It couldn't run apps as well as a computer. It couldn't take pictures like a proper camera. It didn't have usable multitasking. It was missing features that we use every day. It's all about the software and Apple is finally closing the gap. It's like a marriage of powerful usable software and a piece of hardware that can rise to the occasion. So that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sound off in the comments below. Let me know what you thought. Again, my name is Emilio. Leave a comment down below, drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Let me know any suggestions you have for future videos. See you all in the next one. Bye.